I'm Marcus Blake at uh, the studio at That Nerd Show, and we are doing another virtual interview at, uh, from the Naples Film Festival, and we are speaking with directors Megan Peterson and Hannah Black for the film oh. Drought. Um, okay, so what's kind of funny for us is when I looked at it on the list, I honestly thought it was kind of a documentary about a drought, and then I watched the film and laughed and just thought it was wonderful. Um, and I want to compliment you on the use of a ice cream truck. Uh, I never thought that would be a great vehicle to escape it. But just to let our audience know that we do know things from a literature standpoint, great metaphor for childlike innocence. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, that's right. Uh, that's to impress people out there like, yes, we know literature. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So, I have to ask, um, how did you guys come up with this story? And I want to start with you, Megan. Well, actually, I might just throw that right to Hannah. She came to me oh. with this, she came to me with this idea. Um, so I don't want to steal her thunder. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> then to you, Hannah. <laughs> well, so I was a teacher for students on the autism spectrum before I found acting, film, all that. Oh, wow. Um, Megan, yes. Megan and I just uh, completed our first short film together. And I knew that I wanted to create a story about um, someone on the spectrum and specifically um, siblings and that relationship, what that would, what that looks like. It's a very special relationship. And I don't feel like it's represented a lot in films. Um, I brought the idea of drought to Megan. Essentially, it was literally just there's these siblings or friends and two of them are siblings. One of them is on the autism spectrum. I think they like to, they're obsessed or they like weather and they want to be storm chasers, something like that. Um, and I told Megan and she was like, I feel this. I think it's a feature, not a short. And then from there, we went on to create the, the story. It took about three years. Okay. Um, but you're dealing with a very specific, like, drought from North Carolina. It, are, are any one of you from North Carolina? Yes, we both are born, okay. born and raised North Carolinians. Hannah's from Wilmington, where we shot and where we live. Um, and I'm from the western part of the state, from a town okay. called Wilmington. If one of you is a Duke fan and one of you is a North Carolina fan, no fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like sports, so I like whatever Megan likes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Great answer. Um, yeah, I honestly, uh, I was still in high school in 93, so I don't remember their, uh, I don't remember a drought uh, per se. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. It was very specific um, and looked a little bit up with regards to it with North Carolina. Um, another thing that I kind of noticed is, you know, certain stories work well in time periods, and th this feels like a very 90s story. I don't know if you could have the same impact with this story if you did it in the last few years, mostly because I don't see ice cream trucks. That's a very, like, 80s, 90s, 70s thing. Um, so it was that, did you come up w with the time period first, before we, you know, was that just, was that the first thing that came to your mind uh, when doing this story? Yeah, we, um, we, we talked about it. We knew that we wanted, we knew it was going to be a road trip story. And with that, we, first we knew we didn't want cell phones because then they can just call AAA or, you know, Good an point. Uber. It's just not, it's, and there's something about pre-cell phones where there's that innocence that, you just can't capture after right. cell phones have been invented. So we knew that for one. Um, and then also um, autism in the early 90s was not really well known, um, especially in smaller towns. And my mom actually went to Chapel Hill and studied uh, uh, specifically autism in, in the late 80s. And so even just talking to her, she really discussed how people did not know what autism was. And we thought that that was something that we wanted to bring in. If you notice, it's never actually, the word is never said in the right. um,
And then also there was a historic drought in North yeah. Carolina in 93. So why not 93, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have all the makings of, yeah, great surroundings and an interesting time period. Um, <laughs> I feel like, too, I mean, growing up, I didn't know much about autism as well. I feel like the only thing people really knew from a pop culture standpoint is the movie Rain Man. But it doesn't really touch on it that much. And it's people were still left in the dark. And I don't remember going to school with anybody that had it to where you're exposed to it. So that is kind of interesting. Also like the idea of doing a story before cell phones. Uh, I think road trip stories are better pre-cell phone. It's just mostly because again if you have to find you have to find a pay phone or ask to borrow a phone and they may not let you and all that so um so in terms of casting i mean you uh, i know you guys are in the film but how did you go about you know with your casting and finding what you figured what would be the best cast including having yourselves in the film uh sure we're actors first and we are so grateful to be actors in the southeast but that comes with some challenges is there's not as much opportunity um and a lot of the roles that we'll get cast for will be like ditzy blonde waitress or <laughs> number three <laughs> which we're grateful we're so grateful but we wanted to we want to act and um have characters that have a little bit more like to grab onto. So we um, created roles for ourselves, but the casting was so much fun. We cast the movie and um, everyone that you see in the cast is from North Carolina. They're wow. all- Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no LA actors, all right, even yeah, better. We did. we did audition people for specific roles. Um, like we looked far and wide for um, Carl and, and some other roles um, as well and had wonderful tapes that came in from New York and LA and Atlanta um, and Texas and but still and perhaps it's because it is it takes place in North Carolina but also right. there is an amazing talent in North Carolina yeah. that I think is sometimes overlooked and they just everyone that we cast was right for the role. I, I feel like there's amazing talent in a lot of places outside of New York and LA and I mean I know obviously there's a big film industry in Texas and you know but being local here in Texas we know a, a lot of people but and they all go to LA at some point <laughs> but at the same time you know if you're looking to interesting landscapes or having to go to location and, and you're finding, I think you're right. You, you can find a lot of great talent to do, you know, to shoot your stuff. Um, chasing storms. That's another interesting uh, kind of topic. Um, uh, have you two ever chased a storm before? Did you do that to kind of gain some experience of what it felt like? Well, we, we did talk to a pair of storm chasers who are sisters from the Weather Channel. So we did some research. I know it was really interesting and we talked a lot about storm chasing in the East, like in the East Coast, because most people think of storm chasers out in the, you know, in Arizona or in the kind of Midwest. So we spoke with them, but we are not storm chasers ourselves <laughs> we're not but we did catch a storm in the middle of production a hurricane hit um in the middle of production so we had to pause so quite ironic i mean we found a storm um yeah. <laughs> or it found you <laughs> it found us it really yeah. did yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right <laughs> i feel like now I, you know as directors is that is there that part of you that's like well, it's not lightning yet. We can use this. This is natural. <laughs> Let's get a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Anna, Anna. Yes, I see who you're pointing at. I think I was kind of like a little crazy because at first we were, like, we were like, we're pausing. We have to pause. There's a category four. But there was right. a part where I was like, what if like we did just like get some exterior shots of the, you know, just a little bit of, and I was like, no, that's so, that is the dumbest idea I've ever, that's the dumbest idea I've ever come up with. I shot myself down, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, It would be I, cool. <laughs> you know, I spent a year in Kansas and, you know, I think it's kind of a rite of passage to go chase a tornado. And the year I spent in Kansas was right after the movie Twister came out. So it was even more popular. 
Yes. I, I feel you where you're coming where, where you have to shoot yourself down. You take that step back like, no, this really isn't a good idea. Let's take the adrenaline down a notch or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of Kansas and storm chasing, I think uh, your folks would really like this little Easter egg. If you watch the movie again, you'll notice we give a lot of Easter eggs to the Wizard of Oz. I did actually notice that. You noticed it? <laughs> I, <laughs> I noticed, hey, I noticed my, my Wizard of Oz uh, references. I love so. that. <laughs> See, I can actually admit that I've met the last surviving munchkin from the movie at a state fair in Kansas. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, like 25 years ago, and which was kind of surreal, but. Wizard of Oz references to begin with because there's so many I mean how many times do we talk about the man behind the curtain you know especially when you're dealing with conspiracy theories and stuff like that or the fact that you know all four characters are archetypes and really represent we, we can all fit within one so yeah the the journey of uh, oh yeah I have picked up on that and that's great um, so I can't remember. You didn't actually have Yellow Brick Road by Elton John playing in the background, did you? We did not. We okay. don't have the money for that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a little too on the nose. The <laughs> but I am wearing red shoes. I'm wearing red Converse's. Yeah. And if you look at Lillian's necklace, it's a locket, like a heart. Nice. Nice. Um, right. There's a lot of little things. There, if you look, there's there's quite a few, actually. Um, Got to try and find them, but yeah. Well, obviously, I mean, Wiz The Wizard of Oz is a, you know, huge inspiration for you. Uh, but when it comes to making a road trip movie, did you guys take inspiration from other uh, road trip type movies? Uh, yes, but not realizing it until after. Like, I mean, I think we at least I'll speak for myself. I don't know if Megan feels this way. I found that a lot of my favorite films are road trip movies or like the most nostalgic ones. So, and we just are very quirky ourselves. So we gravitate towards right. films that are really quirky. So like Little Miss Sunshine or, um, <laughs> you know, the way, the way, way back isn't a road trip, but it is like they're going to a different destination sort of situation. Right. Um, yeah. By the way, I think, I think that film should be watched every 4th of July. Totally. <laughs> yeah. So good. And they're right after, they're right after Jaws. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Even back, the, Wizard, back. the Wizard of Oz, like, uh, influence, we didn't realize until after the script was ready, which mm -hmm. was really cool. So we didn't, like, take Wizard of Oz and plug it in. We, it's just cool how movies or things will just inspire you and you don't even realize how it's... I, yeah, I think that's... Uh, being a writer myself and been doing it for 20 years, I, I have found myself between novels and scripts and everything being inspired. Like I was watching something one day and then, you know, I somehow something similar ends up in a story and somebody will catch me and like, what were you doing? Oh, well, I saw that movie. <laughs> so, they live in you. They live in you. You don't even like, especially the wizard of Oz. It's such an impactful film for so many people. So it's funny when we found that after years of working on this thing, it, it's just, it's very interesting. Yeah. Well, but I mean, how many, I don't, I don't want to say carbon copies, but it, it's a great template. I mean, how many movies that are very similar in that fashion? I know one of our favorites when it comes to a road trip movie uh, was Paper Towns over the, the, the John Green movie. And yeah. at the time we had a staffer who just, was all in love with it and you know we and and that's another very similar where you have different iconic characters that represent kind of a wizard of oz and that right. lucid thing that you're trying to find um so Don't um, 
<laughs> exactly. Hmm. Uh, so I want to ask uh, two questions uh, as filmmakers. Um, besides The Wizard of Oz, I'm going to start with you, Megan. What is, what is one film that's your go-to film that you can watch over and over? Oh, well, I have the, like, filmmaker answer and the my guilty pleasure answer. <laughs> no, because okay. I want to give both. <laughs> well, I could Absolutely. Just, I could just throw on the holiday any moment, but my true, like, go-to movie that I just love is Big Fish. Um, it's nice. Just, yeah, I just love it for a million reasons. That's my... And another kind of road trip movie. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I love Tim Burton and so whimsical, but yet somehow it gets you. Ugh. Right. So Great. good. And, and Hannah, how about you? Um, I always go to Billy Elliot. It's a movie that I saw when I was in fifth grade. And I think it was the first time that I saw something that just, I felt like I was Billy. I understood Billy. I understood all the other characters too. And, um, I don't know. It's just a simple story, but I feel like it's a lot of people's story. And I really love how this young character is so accepting of everyone else around him, right. but no one wants to accept him for what he wants to do. Right. And I just, I don't know. I just love that movie. I think it's really special. All right. All right. So here's the toughest question you're going to get. Like I said, we're going to test your inner nerd. Um, <laughs> well. I know. <laughs> if you could have a weapon of choice or a superpower from within the nerd universe to fight the forces of evil, what would you choose? And you are allowed to choose two things and put them together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now you're going to be in an X Men movie, just so you know. So that is a good question. Uh, uh, our. Uh, one of our writers, Allison, will love you after she sees this. Number. She wrote her master's thesis on the X-Men being applied to the hero with a thousand faces uh, by Joseph Campbell. That's how she got hired. Oh. Like, I don't even know anything else about you after reading that. That's so, amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Um, okay. I think I, so it can be two superpowers. It can. I think I would be um, invisible and telekinesis. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's me. Uh, I feel like you would be kind of dangerous with those two. Right? <laughs> right. I want to be dangerous. People wouldn't expect it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Megan, how about you? Um, well, maybe my first thought was influenced by our film and not um, evil, <laughs> but the first thing I thought of was, uh, was being like Storm and controlling the weather, because if we could have had that on the stinking movie, <laughs> It would have changed everything. <laughs> it would have looked like a multi-million dollar budget film. Wow. <laughs> you could I have mean, brought yeah. a hurricane. To, to have that superpower when you're trying to get the right light. I can't get the right light. Give me a moment. <laughs> the that, would, that would be awesome.